Okay, today we'll be talking about performing the C-spine exam. So the first thing you need to do is set up your control panel. So we're going to be looking at our, at our technique in the technique book, and we're going to be setting our KD to 70. Our focal spot is a small focal spot. Our preliminary AP is going to be at a 10 mass. We're going to be on the wall bucky. So I have all of my technique set up. I have the IR plates out that I'm going to need for my cervical spine. And in the room we'll have to have our calipers, our shield, gloves to protect ourselves. I have my markers on me. So we'll go into the room now and we will set up our room. You'll see that I already have a preliminary set for the APC spine which includes a 15 degree cephalic angle. I have already have an 8x10 which is placed into the wall lucky. I'm at a 40 inch SID and I'm transversely detented. She'll be in the AP position, so I put my right marker. I have my tube and my bucky aligned, although I will adjust once my patient stands up to ensure that I'm at the right central ray location. Now you can either use the rolly shield that can be placed in front of the patient, or you can have the apron that will be wrapped around the patient's waist. We will just use the rolly shield today since that is easier to maneuver. Over here, I also have any sponges that I may need because I'll also be showing you how to perform the exam on the table using a cross-table lateral C-spine if the patient um, is immobilized. So we're going to get started. So ma'am, if you could just um, take your glasses off, we need to ensure that the patient has removed any artifacts that may be in the way. So we'll ask for any um, bobby pins in her hair, anything metal in her hair, any earrings would have to be taken off, glasses would have to be removed. If there are any um, partials or anything metal, tongue rings or partials, anything like that that can be removed, she would remove those um, from her mouth and we'd have a um, container to put those in. I'm going to have her place her back up against the board. This is going to be for the APC spine. Once again, a 15 degree cephalic angle, 40 inch SID with an eight by 10. Close your eyes just for a second. Our center ray is going to be at the level of C4 and mid sagittal plane. C4, C5 is about the level of the Adam's apple of the thyroid cartilage. I'm gonna move this uh, wall bucket behind you. So I have now centered at my C4, C5 and I've now aligned my IR to be with my CR. I'm going to ensure that my patient is in a true AP position and mid-sagittal plane. You could raise your chin up for me, please. I'm going to place the rolling shield in front of her. I'm going to check my collimation, ensuring that my marker is placed within the light field. I'm going to take a quick measurement right up against her skin. Might be a little cold and hard, ma'am. I'm going to read my measurement there, and that's going to be for my technical factors. You can hold very still. Just bring your chin up just a little bit higher for me. Perfect. All right. Hold very still. I'm going to give you some breathing instructions in just a moment. I'm going to tell you to blow your breath out and hold that out. Don't breathe, okay? Just breathe only until you hear that. Okay. So now I'm going to come around here with my measurement. And I'm going to look to ensure, and it's 10 centimeters in the book, and she is 10 centimeters, so I do not have to change anything. I can either take my glove off, or I can cover my, my um, exposure button with a clean wipe. Ma'am, I want you to blow your breath out and hold it out. Don't breathe. Beep. You can breathe and relax. Now I'm going to go to my oblique. And that's going to be moved back to a 72 inch SID. And we do that because of the OID from the oblique on the patient. We want to compensate for that. Change out my gloves. I'm going to change out my IR. Again, this is going to be an 8 by 10. I'm going to change my SID to 72 inches. I'm 
still going to be at a 15 degree cephalic angle because she is in an AP position. So I'm going to start with her looking away from me. So man, I want you to turn and face your feet right towards my feet, just like this. Okay, and then I want you to turn your head so you're looking at that door right over there. So we want to have the patient turn their head so that it is parallel with the image receptor because we're trying to, to localize the IVFs or intervertebral foramen. So with this degree of obliquity, 45 degrees on the patient, and her um, head parallel, with her head parallel, at, still at the level of C4, C5, we're gonna open up those IVFs. Now the IVFs that we're looking at when we are doing an AP projection is the upsided IVFs. We're opening this side of her neck up so that we can see those IVFs really well. I'm gonna collimate down. And you want probably about an inch above the EAM of light. I'm gonna ensure that my CR is lined up to my IR. And I'm going to move my marker, that's still the right side, into my clean light field that I see right here below her chin, above her shoulder, there's a clean piece of light that has no shadow, and I'm gonna use that. Now some of the clinical sites say to use the same technique as the AP, but remember, you're at a 40 inch to a 72 inch, so you'll have to do your mass distance formula. Or you can measure your part right at the center ray location once again. So hold very still, ma'am. I'm going to give you the same instructions as far as blowing your breath out and holding it out. So hold very still, just like that. I'm going to come around here. I'm going to check my measurement with my book. I'm going to clean this off and process it in just a moment. All right, I don't need to make any adjustments. Blow your breath out. Hold it out. Don't breathe. Beep. You can breathe and relax. I'm going to take my new IR. I have my calipers once again with me. Change out my IR. Now I can either leave the exact same marker on there or I can switch and use my left marker. And that's going to be site dependent. If they state that they want the downside or the upside marked, I'll change my marker just so that you can see that now I'm doing the LPO, so I'll use the left marker. But as I said, I could use the left or the right marker because we'd be marking both sides of her cervical spine. So this time I'm going to have you turn this way, 45 degrees, right there. Turn and face this wall over here. Okay, height-wise, it still should remain exactly the same. The only thing that's going to change is her positioning and the marker if you choose to change that. Ensure that she is parallel. My collimation should be good because once again, we're doing the same body part. I've just changed the position of the body part. I'll roll this shield up next to her once again. I'm going to take that measurement through C4, 15 degree cephalic angle. Hold very still, I'll give you those breathing instructions again. I'm going to come around, ensure my technique. It's going to be good. I will clean that off before I run it. Blow your breath out, ma'am, hold it out, don't breathe. Beep, you can breathe and relax. Now we're gonna move on to the lateral. I'm gonna adjust my technique, a 72 inch SID. And I started with the right posterior oblique first because we do a left lateral. So that way my patient can move from the AP to the right, to the left, continue on to the left lateral. So now I have either an eight by 10 or a 10 by 12 depending on your clinical site's SOP. This one's going to be a perpendicular beam. up. Place the perpendicular beam right here. I'm going to turn my patient all the way to your left side. Just put your arms down by your side. Bring this up right next to you here. 
still at the level of C4, C5, and mid-coronal plane now. So I usually have just posterior to the EAM because you want to make sure that you do not clip the spinous processes. Once again, I'm going to put my left marker within that clean light just below the chin, above the shoulders. You're going to have about an inch of light above the EAM. Showing that she's in a true lateral position. Now when we do our measurement here, we're only going to measure the neck itself at the center ray location. You don't want to measure any of the air gap there because we're trying to get the mass that it's going to take to get through her neck. Okay. Once again, I'm going to give you those same breathing instructions to blow your breath out and hold it out in just a minute. Adjust my CR with my IR. And I've kept my finger on my measurement so I didn't lose it as I was readjusting everything. Hold very still. I'm going to take out my old IR. I will clean it and run it. I'm going to ensure that my technical factors are going to work for my measurements. All right, ma'am, blow your breath out. Drop those shoulders down as far as you can like you're reaching for your feet. Good. All right, blow your breath out. Hold it out. Don't breathe. Beep. You can breathe and relax. Okay. Now, if your lateral does not come out showing your vertebral prominence or the spinous process of C7, you need to see that junction between C7 and T1. You can perform a swimmers. So I'll show you how to do that. Our technical factors go up a little bit for the swimmers because we're actually going to be cutting through the shoulders. So some of the clinical sites require that you do a swimmers. And others only say the swimmers is added if you do not see that C7-T1 junction. Typically done on a 10 by 12. Some of your clinical sites say you can use a 40 inch SID. Some will use a 72 inch SID. So I've changed out my IR. Now our center ray changes just a little bit. We're going to be one inch above the jugular notch. So one inch above the jugular notch is going to put you at the level of the vertebral prominence. Okay? We're going to have the patient raise their left arm up above their head, so straight up above their head. Right. Now, if you have a patient who has really thick shoulders, like a very muscular male, I'm going to load this down right next to you here, you may want to put a five to seven degree caudal angle on your tube to help cut in. What we're trying to do is we're trying to separate the humeral head of the left side and the right side so that the right one is lower than the left one and this will place the uh, C7-T1 junction in between the, the two humeral heads so that you free, it, free up that space of superimposition. I will then measure. Now when you measure your patient, you need to measure all the way through the arm as well because our technical factors are going to be going through her arm that's lifted up. So we need to ensure that we have enough mass to cover that. I'm going to move my marker. So remember, I moved my center ray a little bit to be an inch above the jugular notch and still right about at the level of the EAM or just behind it to ensure I don't clip any of the spinous process. I'm going to tell you Billy Brooke out in just a minute. Hold very still. I'm going to take my technique and ensure once again that I do not need to change anything. I will wipe this down before I run it. Blow your breath out and hold it out. Don't breathe. Beep. You can breathe and put your arm down. Okay. Now, if you have a trauma patient, you will also be doing what we call an open mouth or an odontoid. That one's done at a 40 inch SID. So this is typically for your trauma patients. If they've had any sort of trauma or injury to the neck, they want to be able to see C1 and C2 which you will not be able to see on the AP because the um, mouth superimposes those features. So what we have to do is we actually have to shoot through the open mouth. So I'm going to bring this in a little bit closer to you, but it won't hit you. 40 inches by D. It's got to be a perpendicular beam. I'm going to change back to an 8 by 10. Slide this 
start the leg. I'm going to move her to where her back is up against the board once again. Now our central ready location for this is going to be through the open mouth. So basically we're going to be coming um, at the occlusal plane. So we're going to adjust that occlusal plane which is formed by the top of her upper incisors, the bottom of the top of her upper incisors, and the mastoid tip. That's typically where we want to be coming through. So just keep your mouth closed. Um, close your eyes for a second. I'm going to turn this light on. I'm going to adjust, feeling for her mastoid tip. Okay. You can open up your eyes. I'm going to raise this up behind you. Okay. Mid sagittal plane. Put the left marker. Got to column it down to about a four by four. Right now, for this one, we're not going to measure the patient. We typically go 25% lower in the mass than we did for an APC spine. So now, what I want you to do is open your mouth. Just drop that jaw, nice and wide. Okay, you see the occlusal plane right there. You want it just to be coming through right through the bottom of her teeth, bottom of the top of the incisors. Hold very still just like that. All right, just don't move, don't breathe. 25% less. All right, blow your breath out, hold it out, don't breathe. Beep, you can breathe and relax. Okay, now clean this plate off that I just brought around. Now, if you do not see the dens on your open mouth waters, you can do a fuchs. A fuchs is to catch the tip or the dens, which is actually the body of C1 on C2. So once again, another 8 by 10. And the fuchs is only done, like I said, if you cannot visualize the dens. If you can see the dens and the zygopopsa joints between C1 and C2 on your odontoid, then you do not need to do the fuchs. 8 by 10. Now with this one, we're going to look at her MML, which is her mental meata line, and that goes from her chin to her EAM. We're going to extend that chin up, um, and then we're going to match the CR location so that it becomes parallel with her MML. So typically that's about a 25 to 30 degree cephalic angle, depending on how much your patient can raise their chin up. Close your eyes once again, I'm going to turn the light on. All right, so you see that I'm looking at the top line of my center ray, and I'm matching it up with her MML, and then we're going to enter right in between the gonions or the angles of the mandible and mid-sagittal plane. So then I will move my patient over here just a little bit. I'm going to slide this in front of you. Just be careful not to move. Slide her over mid-sagittal. Still good. There's her gonions. I'm entering it right there. Okay, still a four by four. Left marker. I'm gonna adjust the button behind you to align up my CR and my IR since I put the angle. About 25 to 30 degrees, but once again, you still need to check with your patient to see how far they can extend the chin so you can get right up underneath there and get that fuse. All right, measurement. I'm going to measure from my entrance to my exit. So it's going to be at an angle just like her body is. All right, I'm going to tell you to blow out your breath and hold down in just a minute. So I'm going to look at my measurement and adjust my technique accordingly. All right, blow your breath out and hold it out. Don't breathe. Beep. You can breathe and relax. And I'll take a new 8 by 10. Now, over at Wig Med, they do not place an angle for their obliques. So they just do a straight perpendicular beam. So I'll show you how to do that really quick. So we'll use another 8 by 10. It's going to be a 40 inch SID. 72 inch SID, I apologize. 72 inch SID, but it's going to be a perpendicular beam. We'll turn our patient, turn and face me right here. Okay. Turn and look at that wall right over there. Okay. C4, C5. Okay. Turn just a little bit more. Right there. Okay. And come forward just a hair. 
right there, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna adjust, lower this down, because I have to match up now that I don't have the angle. My marker is in that clean light within the crook of her neck. I'm gonna collimate down side to side, just in front of, move forward just a little bit more, just in front of her, um, the EAM should be just in front of the center right, so not to clip the spinous process. So if you're over at weight med, the only thing that you're gonna change with your oblique is going to be no angle on your tube. Typically it's a 15 to 20 degree cephalic angle for your posterior obliques, but we're going to do no angle if you are performing your obliques over at weight med. Okay, you can relax. One more thing I wanna show you, if you happen to do anterior obliques versus your posterior obliques, our patient will be turned like so with a PA projection, a PA position. Turn your head straight over like that. Now the marker would have to come on this side because this is now her left side, okay? So if you are using the angle, if you're not over at Wakeman and you're using the angle, now that we have our patient in a PA position, we will perform a 15 to 20 degree caudal angle. 15 to 20 degree caudal angle. So we will angle 15 to 20 degrees. So that's going to be your 90 minus the 15 to 20. Not plus because we're going down. You step forward just a little bit. Right behind the EAM. I'm going to put my marker in the clean light there. I'm going to adjust my IR because I put that angle on there. Make sure my collimation is adequate. I will slide up my shield. I would measure my patient from there and it would be done on exposure. So then instead of doing the posterior RPO and LPO, you would do the anterior RAO and LAO. And this time when you do your anterior obliques, you are actually opening up the anterior side. So on your anterior obliques, you're seeing the downside, but on the posterior obliques, you're seeing the upside. So always think about what part of the neck you're trying to open up and elongate. Okay, so that is the cervical spine at the wall buggy. All right, so I'm gonna move my patient over and I will show you the trauma. So ma'am, if you could come on over here. Okay, you can come on over. Now with the trauma of the cervical spine, our patient would be in a collar. So they would not be able to use a pillow because that's going to throw off an artifact. Our patient will be in a collar and we would want to have the neck raised as much as we possibly could. We're going to perform our cross table lateral which is also known as the brow up cervical spine. So if your patient comes like for a motor vehicle accident and they are in a collar on a backboard, we would slide them over onto the table, or you could also just leave them on the stretcher and perform this the same way. It would just be done on the stretcher. So I'm gonna go get the grid that I need. Now for this, because I'm no longer in the wall bucky, I would change it to tabletop, and I'm going to select the cross table lateral. This one still has a 72 inch SID, small focal spot. Take my calipers. Okay, so with this you would need the portable grid, you'd need some sponges, you'd need your grid holder. So always have those supplies out just in case your patient ends up being a trauma patient. So I'm gonna slide this as close as I can. Now obviously I have her arm and shoulder there, so that's as close as I can get it. I can't use my rolly shield, so I will put a lap shield on my patient at this time. I'm just gonna place this right down on a cold. I'm gonna put it towards her side because the beam is gonna be a horizontal beam which is going to be cutting across the table. So I don't just want to lay it on top of her, her lap, I want it to come to the side because the beam is going to be also coming from the side. Place a horizontal 
bean. Get as much distance as I can. 72 is ideal. Coming in at the level of C4, C5. Still want to have about an inch of light above the EAM. And this is her left side, so I put my left marker in the plain light. I want to ensure that my grid is centered to the center of my light field. Then going to measure from side to side through my center ray. Now I'm going to be telling you to reach down towards your feet as much as you can. And I'm going to have you blow your breath out in just a minute. I'll tell you that in just a second, okay? Well, very still. I will then take this around, check my technical factors, adjust as needed. All right, reach down for your feet as much as you can. Blow your breath out. Don't breathe. Beep. You can breathe and relax. All right, I will show you how to do a trauma oblique on the table. So we'll go to the technique for that. Now we're gonna go still tabletop because we can do this either grid or on the stretcher. So I'll continue to be on the tabletop to show you that. Instead of your patient being in a 45 degree obliquity, you're going to turn your tube so that it's 45 degrees. And this will give you the same effect, close your eyes for a minute, this will give you the same effect as if she was in an oblique. So I'm still going to be coming through the level of C4, C5 with about an inch of light above the EAM, 45 degrees. Now for this, I'm going to not put the center of the part in the center of the IR. Because the way the angle of the tube is, the image is actually going to be shot out across. So then I have to have extra image receptor towards her left side to capture the image that I'm trying to take. So what we would do is we would have to roll our patient up, log roll them because they're trauma position. We would slide this up underneath and have her roll back. And it's not very comfortable, so you want to ensure that you have everything set up the way you need to. Now I have placed the majority of the IR over here on this side so that by the time the image comes down, it will hit the middle of the plate. I will then measure. And you see how I got everything centered and everything where I wanted it before I put the plate in. I'm going to measure. I will put my marker. And this would need to be in a glove that was, if it was going to be touching my patient. I don't have it touching my patient, so I don't need a glove. So either you need a glove or you would need to take apart your tape off of it and wipe it down and retape before you use it again. All right, so ma'am, you just hold still just like that. I will take my measurement, I will adjust my technique if I could not achieve my distance that I would need. Ideally you want either a 72, but if you, all you can get to is perhaps a 60, then you could um, adjust your technique using the mass distance formula. Blow your breath out, hold it out, don't breathe, beep, okay? And then obviously I would do the exact same thing on the other side. I would just come around, just like so, 45 degrees over on this side now. I would get as much distance as I could, check, like so, 
I would obviously change out this grid with a new um, IR in it, and I would shift it over to this side and use my right marker instead of the left. So that is how you perform a upright C-spine. C-spine on the table, which could also be done exactly the same on the stretcher because I did it tabletop, depending on your patient's condition. Thank you. And that concludes the C-spine.